So we're going to do a demonstration of SSID enrollment. And so just real quickly, the student enrollment file is used to establish ownership of student records and CalPads. It determines cohort inclusion and cumulative enrollment counts. It designates district of geographic residence for transfer students, and it gives the student their enrollment status. Um, the exits we will save for end of year because you do have to exit the students in CalPads, uh, but currently the focus of Fall 1 is getting these students enrolled. So let me switch my screen. Marshall currently is doing CalPads basic, so if you're brand new and you feel like I'm skipping through a step or two, please attend the basics. Marshall explains the navigation in great detail. Uh, I'm not going to do that, all right? And so uh, I'm already on the file upload screen. I've selected my file type, right? And I'm beginning with the SNR, and I'm going to choose my file. And so at the top of the screen, you can see Kyle Paz is thinking, right? And file upload successful. Great. So let me filter for submitter. I'm using the state level account, right? Um, we're in uh, the test environment. So you can see it says test.calpads.org. It's not real CalPads. It's a test environment, so we have fake data to preserve the privacy of real students. And I have an account that's associated with the LEA, but it doesn't have view of files that I submit through my state level account. All right, we have the files that I have submitted, right? And the one I have just submitted is in process. But it's the same as this one, since CalPads takes a little bit of time. We submitted it prior to training. And so let's look at our results. I have 19 past records on one rejected record. And so this is a good time as we wait on CalPads. If you access the session through a bridge, right, the LMS, there's two attachments. There's one specific to this training, and then there's one that's for batch file uploads, right? That is specifically dedicated, that PowerPoint, to the batch file upload process. And so the enrollment file is a little bit different than all the other files. So I encourage you to download that PowerPoint. And so, as you can see, this is the view submission detail screen, right? A summary of results is at the top. Currently, my file status is in review. I'm reviewing it. And my errors are here. And then a list of those errors are down here, right? And so I had one rejected record, but it produced two errors. SENR 027 and SENR 00999. So anytime you see a 999 error, ignore it. Waste no time on it. It will resolve itself when you correct the other errors. And in fact, it says that, and I've never known it to fail. So you focus on all the other errors, and it will resolve itself. So I did have warnings, but they're not fatal errors, so they won't prevent me from posting the records, right? So these are just warnings. So the first thing you want to do is resolve your fatal error. So I look at SENR 0027, multiple primary enrollments in the LEA. I see this record here, and I open it, and it says student school start date, 2019-91. Well, that's the correct date. I don't know why that would be triggering a problem, right? So anytime you have a discrepancy in CalPads that triggers a fatal error, uh, you want to look at the CalPads ODS and that rejected record. So I have my rejected record here. I'm going to open a new window, and I'm going to right-click New Window. I'm going to paste the SSID there. And this should, hopefully is all review for you all, but if it's not, okay. And so I'm in the CalPEDS ODS and I have the demographic record. Um, typically you want to do this on multiple screens. If you have multiple screens, you could toggle back and forth through tabs, but I wanted to show you uh, how we troubleshoot this error in CalPEDS. And so 
going to try to fit them both on the same screen and do a side by side. Okay, this is great. Um, so the field name is student school student start date, right? So I'm going to make a comparison to the fields validated, and we identify the fields validated using the CalPads error list. And I'm going to look. And so I see 9 1 2019 and 2019 9 1. It's the same date. Why would I trigger an error? Well, that's why you need the error list, right? Because CalPads gives you help, but this isn't where my problem is. This is the exact same field. The other fields validated are the school of attendance. So let me make a comparison there. My rejected record I had my student enrolled at Emerson Elementary. In CalPads, I have the student enrolled at, oh, the students enrolled at Berkeley Unified. The student can't be, the student cannot have two primary enrollments. Either the student is at Berkeley Unified or at Emerson Elementary. I would go back to my student information system, confirm the correct enrollment, and submit a new CalPads enrollment file, right? I could. If this record in CalPads ODS is incorrect, I could update this record, but I have to make sure that, cons that record is consistent with uh, my student information system. So that is a, you know, a scenario, a way that you would work through your error. And we chose SENR 27 because it's, um, it's quite a popular enrollment error. So we're going to go back. After we would have resolved all our enrollment errors, we submit new files, new files, new files. All of a sudden, we have no rejected records. So as we are examining our past records, this is unique to the enrollment file, right? SSID requests show up down here. Everywhere the disposition says ready, that's a request that has been made that you need to confirm and select, right? And we'll go through that shortly. Enrollment updates or exits can be posted in the school status summary. If I were to click this button, you can see each individual schools, how many records remain in the post, and post them individually. Post all does nothing for my request. It does nothing at all. So there's three different types of SSID requests for students who do not have SSIDs, right? There's a match status for new, single, and multi. And so we have examples of all three. So a new match is a student that has never been in a California public school. And CalPads did not match any demographic records, right? So you click new, and you only have two options. I can either assign the student SSID or select none of the above, or I can click cancel and not make a decision. I would, if I have a student that's a transfer student, I know they've had a public school enrollment in, in California, I would not select new. I would do my due diligence, see if I can find out the middle name, the last name, look in CalPads at the previous record of enrollment to see what the SSID was, because I would expect a transfer student to have an SSID. Now, single is the result of a match and only one match, and that match is 100. So you can see the match score at the top, 100, right? Toka Burrito is definitely this student, right? And so if I thought this match was accurate, I would select that student, and I would click Save. If I didn't have confidence, I would click none of the above. Or if this was just a student with similar demographics but not the same student, I would click New SSID. And then multiple match is more of the same, right? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six kids named Captain Marvel, right? And none of them are 100%. So I have to review each of these students and their demographic information to identify, right? And some of this, right, 97, 97, 97. They're all likely to be the student I'm looking for. So I may need to look into their demographic records at the parent or the race ethnicity history to help identify whether or not this student is the one I'm looking for. 
This is a, a shortcut, a preview. You also can look at just the differences between the student that's being uh, the imported student, which is the student I need to match the SSID to, to the name, right? So you see it says Marvel Captain, Captain Marvel. So the name is a little bit different. It could have been transposed. So you, go, you do all that. And then this one is Marvelous Marvel. So these are all potential candidates. And I wouldn't want to select one without being definite. Now, as a shortcut, single and new matches can be automated if your CalPads LEA administrator gives you the auto post role in your account. You can auto post either single matches, new matches, or both. What you can never auto post are the multi. They always require revision. After I select, and this, the disposition will change to selected, after I select um, all my matches or none of the above, that I exclude them, I validate the matches. At the bottom, there's the validate match. It'll process, and then it'll give me the option to post. You post the selected matches, right? And that will take care of only the matches. So with the SCNR file, you may have to post all at the top and do matches at the bottom. So be aware of that, right? If you select your matches, CalPad says, okay, matches selected up here. This is where you get your notification where it says view submission details. You have to know to scroll all the way down to the bottom and select post. You see the first post button that you see won't do anything for your matches, only the enrollment summary. And so I didn't, I, I talked you through those steps because I want to preserve this data for future sessions. So please forgive me for not doing all the, the complete demonstration. So I posted my enrollment file, right? So I would then submit the next file or the next several files. 